My name is Martina Droth and I am the Deputy Director and Chief Curator of the Yale Center for British Art. The work I have chosen is Mrs. Pinckney and the Emancipated Birds of South Carolina by Yinka Shonibari, MBERA. The Center commissioned this work from the artist in 2017. It references a historical figure, Eliza Pinckney, who owned a plantation in South Carolina in the 18th century. And she became notable for the cultivation of indigo, a success that she owed to the enslaved on her plantation who brought the knowledge and skills about indigo from Africa. Shonibari has said that part of his role as an artist is to interrogate the past. And here he invokes a special dress that Mrs. Pinckney had made on the occasion of an audience with Princess Augusta in London in 1753 and the gifts that she brought, indigo dyed fabrics and living birds native to the Carolinas. The figure is wearing a dress made from Shonibari's signature pattern textiles, which introduced the idea of cultural hybridity and global trade. The figure is balanced on a globe, which shows Britain's 18th century colonies. The open cage and the freed birds are metaphors for emancipation, but Shonibari also wants his work to remain open to multiple interpretations. He has said that it's as much about feminism, identity politics and art making as it is about slavery and post-colonialism. His hope is that a work like this can instigate layered conversations that involve art history and politics. I think it's beautiful. And like, but what's funny is like, when I hear what it's about, and like, when I listen to the description of it, I become less interested in it. And which is probably, you know, it was a contradiction in some ways, but I just, the beauty of it and the precariousness of it really appeals to me and it makes me want to sort of project my own meanings onto it. I mean, songwriting is a different form, but something that like one of my favorite songwriters, Tori Amos, often says about her work is that other people's interpretation of her songs is none of her business. And so I kind of like just looking at this image, taking in the colors, taking in the, the scale of it, taking in the sort of uh, almost fantastical nature of it, and like, making my own story out of it, as opposed to the very serious meaning that the artist has behind it. So initially, um, what came to mind for me was the way in which colonization, the way that it was sold to Europeans, was through feminizing um, the countries in which they are, they were colonizing, right? So we use it still all the time in language when we think about, oh, you know, the, the fertile lands of, <laughs> of whatever. And so for me, when I looked at this piece, um, of course it, it sort of immediately, I, I thought of what does it mean to be uh, a, a woman who is in this quest to colonize a land and the way even that that is uh, both a very violent act um, because of course the other part of that history with those images is the raping of women, right, of indigenous women. Um, and how this woman, it feels like, uh, gets to think about colonization in a way that is very kind of frivolous and fun, right? She's sort of dancing on top of the globe it is hers, there's something very fun about it. The way that her arms are placed to me is really uh, significant. She almost looks like Snow White, right? <laughs> With the little bird on her finger. And yet I'm interested in the fact that the artist chose uh, on top of that to have her head as a cage, right? And so what does that also say about the way in which the project of colonization for white women in particular uh, is also about caging their own femininity, trying to even like, even a fun way, keep the, the native birds caged, right, as a treat. It was one of those situations where I had this immediate intake of breath when I saw it. And it, it almost seems as if all of the messaging instantly like <laughs> entered and I had to make sense out of it. But I think it was really just seeing the precariousness of this person on the earth, right? And the sort of 
mixture of like power and not, you know, um, that really that really struck me. It was, it was a very beautiful and also sort of disturbing image to me. So it had this sort of lighthearted, very invite. It kind of invited you to to examine it, but then I think the more that you take in, it allows it allows itself to sort of accumulate meaning on you as you sit with it.